All right. Our next speaker is Gunnar from Salesforce. He'll talk about source code generators written in Java. Thank you. Hey, yes, so um, we do have, um, at Salesforce, we have um, a very large code base that we're currently migrating to, uh, to Bazel. And, and what I'm talking here is um, in, in this source code, we're using a lot of, yep, we're using a, we're using a lot of uh, custom written or, or over time written source code generators that generate source code or resources or metadata, other files, data files that we need as part of our build. And all of them, almost all of them are written in Java. Um, so this is mostly for the folks doing Java. Who's doing Java? That's quite a lot. And uh, who's writing rules themselves? Oh, wow, a lot. Yeah, so we looked into different possibilities, general being one of them, and um, we decided on, you know what, we're going to um, do the real thing and, and build real rules for them. Um, how do you do it for 25, or even like more than 25 um, generators with a template? Uh, so first we took the, the most difficult one that we had, which is um, used among almost all of our projects, and um, that generator by itself is very large and has a lot of dependencies itself and uh, also lots of inputs it requires and then it generates a lot of different outputs. So what we did is we took that one and then we did an investigation and tried to convert it into Bazel. Of course, first you have to make sure that the generator itself is probably Bazel, Bazel files so that it builds with Bazel. And um, from the lessons we learned, we started building that template that we then gonna roll out to all the DOS generators. And it basically helped us to, uh, uh, once we did uh, the, the first, this first big thing, uh, we're able to do the other 25 in like no time. Because all of a sudden we had a template that we could just apply. Um, so the, far, the more we did, the faster we get. What does the template provide? Um, consistent layout and concepts across all of them. So Bazel is new for us. Um, the first time I looked at Bazel was um, May this year, right? So we, we, we needed to learn a lot of things. And um, what we wanted to ensure is that uh, we don't go too crazy uh, and, and have too much variance in all of these different things. So we did it once uh, with this giant one and threw it all away, created a template, and then with that template, we applied it to all the builders again. Um, Given that we have a large project, we also wanted to uh, see that the things are uh, as performant as possible. So instead of using a gen tool in starting a process for each of those builders, whenever it needs to run, we have like a couple thousand modules right now in Maven, but when it comes to the Bazel world, it, it will be way more packages. We wanna make sure that we use persistent burgers right from the beginning, if possible. Uh, so during our research, we discovered a few rules, uh, Afro and, and also the Scala rules that have uh, code that we could reuse. Um, that's why the template is open source as well, by the way. And um, we use Pico CLI to wrap our existing Java code uh, of the builder uh, into nice command lines that we then can invoke um, from, uh, from Bazel or from the command line itself. Uh, the funny story is a lot of those builders has been, um, they already have main methods because there were command lines before, uh, be because before Maven were doing and, then we moved everything to Maven and then we wrapped basically all of the builders in Maven plugin and over time they extended it and get, got heavily into Maven. And the template also includes examples. You can go check it out in the Git repo. Uh, Few important things I'd like to hi highlight. Um, we we'll try to apply best practices, um, but again, we're still learning. So if you see something that you think is wrong, submit a pull request or an issue. We're happy about any feedback, right? There is the uh, so there's a, a BZL file for um, for the rule definitions of the builder itself and the implementation. Um, then we have um, the repositories uh, BZL file where we actually list all the dependencies of the builder. So as a, most of our builders are written in Java, they need dependencies. We use uh, rules JVM external uh, to fetch those. Um, we still have, uh, there's still some native bind in there uh, and I'm trying to figure out 
uh, what it should be replaced with. And um, I got some feedback today, uh, so I'm incorporating that into template soon. Um, yeah, there's the uh, my builder command, uh, which is basically um, a nice class that you can just uh, use. It, it shows how Pico CLI is being used to add parameters to builders. Uh, it implements a little bit of a dummy uh, code generator for you to experiment with. And then there's the invoker, which is uh, basically a generic worker that uh, establishes that builder as a, as a persistent process. Um, yeah. All that, need to be, all that needs to be done is clone the template, uh, rename it, but you can do search and replace for everything that's my builder, and uh, replace it with what you like it, and dump it into uh, the source code repository of, uh, of the source code generators. All right, um, I have one more talk uh, in two hours, uh, but then there's also other people uh, from Zesos here talking about um, the basal eclipse plugin that we kind of brought back alive. Questions? So after you generate the code, how do you deal with the generated code? Do you check them in, or how do I uh, define the generated code? The yes. So the question is, how do we deal with the generated code um, so that the IDE finds the generated code? Do we check it in or not? Uh, our policy is to not check it in. That's what we've done in the Maven world, and uh, so. Um, basal the basal generate the code ends in the basal out directory, and uh, so what ha what's happening is is um, it works nice on basal. We have yet to find the developer experience in the IDE, uh, but we are hoping because we're also working on the basal Eclipse plugin that um, it, the the basal Eclipse plugin reads the target, reads the output, so we can generate the class path inside Eclipse and add it, add it to the IDE so that it finds the source code as well as uh, builds it. So you, you, you want to deal with that ducking? Yeah. Um, how do we find the build times of Basil versus the one in AND? Um, that is difficult to compare because when um, our project was in end, that was five years ago. Now, uh, now it's in Maven, and uh, the build time from our Maven monolith compared to the Basil monolith is um, well. I can say it, it was cut in half, um, but then also um, we realized that a lot of this depends on how the graph dependency graph looks like. Uh, Maven is spending a lot of time with uh, resolving the transitives and bringing in the transitives. And so actually, compilation in, in, in Maven takes longer because it has a much larger uh, graph to, uh, to resolve against. Right? So it's really, it's really uh, tough to do apple to apple comparison. Uh, you're out of time, so. Okay. Thank you, Donald.